Hello again, it's Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. This programming example comes from Chapter 3 on sampling. Now, when an analog signal is converted to the digital domain, its value is observed at equal time points, a process known as sampling. The sampler is governed by a high-precision clock that acts like a metronome, and at precise time intervals, the clock is responsible for indicating the exact moment that the signal level must be captured. Now for the sampled signal to be perfectly reconstructed, the time interval between each successive sample must be identical. This is known as an isochronic sampler. However, any deviations from perfectly isochronic sampling is known as jitter. And if a sample is captured at slightly imprecise time intervals, then the signal will actually become somewhat distorted. Music engineers may already be familiar with some temporal distortions from the analog domain, for example. Both tape as well as turntable playback systems can suffer from temporal variations often described as wow and flutter, and often heard as a frequency wobbling. However, digital jitter has a different impact. It adds noise and distortion to the sampled signal, and if jitter is present on the ADC, the analog to digital converter then, the signal becomes irrecoverably distorted. Now large amplitude and high frequency signals are the most prone to jitter distortions, which can arise from the uh, analog to digital converter, interconnections between digital devices, or the digital audio converter. Additionally, if each of these subsystems have jitter, then the jitter accumulates. Now jitter can be characterized by the RMS, the root mean square, of its timing error. And it's a reasonable question to ask, what is a tolerable, tolerable amount of jitter for a digital audio system? We can address this question by considering the worst case scenario, a very high frequency, very large amplitude signal. Let's stick with the typical audio system at 44.1K with a bit depth of 16 bits. For this scenario, we want to generate, uh, excuse me, we want the jitter noise floor to be no greater than the dynamic range of our converter, or minus negative, minus 96 dB full scale. We can use an equation from an analog devices application note by Brad Brannon that relates the amount of jitter to the noise floor that jitter creates for any given frequency. So for jitter to be below negative 96 dBFS at the Nyquist frequency, 22.05 kilohertz, then the RMS of the jitter must be below 0 0.1 nanoseconds. So while jitter is impossible to avoid completely, this provides us some guidelines as to what amount of jitter is tolerable in order to guarantee that it does not contribute in any significant way to the overall noise floor, even in the worst case scenario. Now you may be wondering what jitter sounds like. That's going to be explored in this programming example, in which we'll simulate jitter and listen to its impact. Here, we will make the standard deviation of jitter called JRMS, a variable that we can adjust to hear several amounts of jitter. We're going to start off at 1,000 nanoseconds. Now, the process of sampling, since these are all digital signals, we're going to have to simulate sampling. And that's going to be done by designing a 1 kilohertz sinusoid at a sample rate of 4.41 megahertz. That's 100 times greater than 44.1 kilohertz. And we're going to keep every 100th sample rate, uh, excuse me, keep every 100th sample resulting in a sample rate of 44.1. So this is how we're going to simulate sampling. However, in order to simulate jitter, instead of taking exactly every 100th sample, we're going to apply a random offset with a standard deviation of JRMS. That's going to be applied, resulting in sampling intervals approximately every 100th sample, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. And the jitter offset is going to be randomly generated with the function randin. While this example uses a single 1 kilohertz sinusoid, you could also experiment with loading in an audio file and increasing the sample rate uh, by a factor of SRC, 
the sample rate conversion, using the function resample. So let's take a look. Uh, so we're going to upsample by a factor of 100, starting at 44.1k, and generate our very high sample rate x, or sinusoid, 2 times pi times 1 kilohertz. Here's our time vector, and we divide by our sample rate. We're going to set the jitter amount to 1,000 nanoseconds, and we're going to convert that from nanoseconds to samples. So our JRMS, just out of curiosity, is around plus or minus four samples at this very high sample rate. Um, when we save our output, since this process um, is simulating sampling by taking every 100th sample, n is going to start at 1 and then it's going to jump up to 101, then 201, and 301. We don't want to save the indices like that in our output y, so we're going to create a new variable c and t that's just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, just like that. So we're going to start that off at 1. OK, so inside our for loop, we're going to generate a random number. OK, let's see what that looks like. Now this is going to be with the standard deviation of 1. So when we take this JIT here, we're going to scale it by JRMS. That's going to give us a uh, standard deviation that we specified up here. So we've got this random jitter amount. Here we have three samples in the positive direction. So let's see how this works. We're going to grab, remember, we're not going to grab every 100th index. We're going to be 100 plus or minus a little bit, this jitter amount. So here we're going to add three samples to our sample index, n. Now we need to round that. Let's initialize n to 1 just so we can see what happens on the first one. If we round that, instead of grabbing the first sample, instead we're going to grab the fourth sample. Now when you run this, it's going to be different because every time we run rand n, it's going to produce a new random value. We're going to put a couple checks on here. We have our first check to make sure that we're not trying to grab a sample that happens before the beginning of the file. And we're also going to make sure we're not grabbing a sample that's longer than the length of the file. So that's all these two are doing. They're just clamping the sample index. Then we're going to capture that jittered location, save it into Y, and then finally we can hear the result. So let's listen to this. We've got a fairly large amount of, uh, of jitter going on, We've set it to 1,000 nanoseconds. Let's listen. There you go. You can hear it. You can hear it. Let's turn this way down and hear a clean version. And go back up. We'll go up to 10,000 nanoseconds. So the jitter is manifesting as a broad spectrum noise that's contributing to the noise flow of our signal. How high can we go? Well, that's unbearable. Even at 1,000 nanoseconds, it's uh, not tolerable. 100, still audible. 10, I can't hear it. Can you? Download the example from digitalaudiotheory.com and listen for yourself. Thanks for listening. Next program uh, example is going to be from chapter 4 on aliasing and reconstruction. Thanks.